What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and welcome to Fudge Muppet. Today I'm actually here with Scott from Fudge Muppet as well. Say hello Scott. Hello. Scott's here, something very casual, but this is my first impressions on Fallout 76. As you probably know, I am back in Australia now after being at the Greenbrier over in West Virginia for a very, very fun event and three hours of hands-on time with the game. This is the first impressions video. I'm actually doing it impromptu. And the reason I'm doing it with Scott is because I thought it would be really authentic instead of writing down all my thoughts and crafting them a certain way to just tell you guys what I thought in the same way that I would tell my best friend in a kind of real way. The other thing as well is Scott wasn't wined and dined by Bethesda, so full disclosure on that one. I basically had the week of my life. They flew me over there from Australia for free. They're not paying me to make any videos, but they paid for my flights. We got alcohol and drinks and free food and we had a blast with all our friends. So there is that bias there that, yeah, I had a really good time. And then in the midst of that, I played the game. However, as Scott would know, because he was wined and dined with me in Kangaroo Valley uh, for the Morrowind expansion, uh, it doesn't really affect our opinion. I mean, we don't really do a lot of game reviews here on Fudge Muppet, but I mean, we still came out and said, hey, if you like Elder Scrolls Online, you're going to love the Morrowind expansion. But if you don't like it, then it's probably just going to look pretty to you. And they stuffed up some lore, and there was also some good lore. So Fallout 76, what did I think of it? How is the game going to turn out in my opinion? Now, one thing I'll say off the bat is that no one really knows, right? So we had three hours of hands-on time with the game, which sounds like a lot, but it's not really. And it also gave us an experience with the game that I would say is unique and not necessarily representative of the final feeling of playing the game for real. For example, we had a Bethesda staff team leader with us at all times, who actually, while explaining, you know, how to play the game, did talk over a lot of the dialogue, and they did talk over a lot of the lore, and I'd be trying to listen to a hollow tape, and then I have a team leader telling me, you know, to eat food or drink water or a certain uh, mechanic of the game. So it was, it was very different to if I played it on my own or if I played it with another friend who wanted to be quiet and listen to the story. The other thing was they chucked us all kind of in the starting area of the game. So the game felt way more populated than it would feel if um, I was playing the game authentically. And we were even told that by the devs. They said, if you go and, and play the game for real... Uh, running into people is not something that happens often because they're spread out over this massive map, which did feel pretty massive. Whereas, you know, in our experience, everyone was just starting from the vault and running around outside that. So it was a lot more populated than it would actually be. So yeah, big thing to realize is we only had three hours with the game and it was over very fast. And like, you have to realize with Fallout 4, I really felt like it was the best game out as I was playing it, but it wasn't until I had time to like reflect on the, that and realize there were a lack of side quests and realize what was radiant and repetitive and what wasn't before I could really rate the game. And it could be the same with this. That's the thing. No one, don't take anyone's opinion out there super, super seriously because no one has had enough time to form a really strong opinion, which is why this is first impressions. Well now, Spill the juicy goss on the first impression I want to know about role playing because that's a big thing for us here at Fudge Muppet. And I have a feeling my just initial, my first impression of your particular, your first experience with it you've would seen, be. You've seen my gameplay. I've seen your gameplay and footage. You weren't wind and died. That it's not exactly going to be like builds like we would have in Fallout 4 and stuff with the huge backstory and stuff. There's lots of perk cards and stuff there, which could have like different like statistical ways of playing, but I feel like the role playing is going to be lacking. Let me know. Yeah, yeah. Think. All right. So role playing, uh, you're definitely correct in that assumption. It really did feel like role playing isn't going to be nearly as big a part of this game as previous Fallout games. I mean, as we, as we can expect, right? Like, it's an online game. I think everyone saw this coming. There's no other NPCs that aren't people. So, there's a lot of lore in there. There really is, like, a ton of lore and holotapes and notes and stories and world building. But, um, in terms of role-playing your character, there's not really. And the other thing is, as a lot of people don't know, you can actually change your appearance on the fly, right? 
Now, obviously, if you wanted to role play, like you could have a set character, but you can change what you you can change who you are. <laughs> Yeah. With, with, with a customization thing on the fly. You don't need console commands for that. You can just whip that up and change. And in terms of the characters, like we already know the setup to um, Vault 76 is not very good <laughs> because you'd have to be, if you wanted to be pre-war with a cool pre-war story, you, you got to be like an older uh, grizzled dude. Otherwise, you, you know, had to be born in the vault, but m more or less the story is you were chosen because you're the best and brightest and you, you can do some things with it, right? You can do some things with it, but I think it definitely, especially with builds, and there is a lot of potential for builds, it will be on the statistical side. So like, let's talk about perk cards. I actually really like perk cards. The reason being is um, while you don't really have as much of a set build because you can sw switch perk cards in and out, um, there are so many, there are so many perk cards to find. So it's not like in, in Fallout 4 where, oh, here are the perks and you know, you wrap your head around them and, and each stat has 10 perks and that's that. There are a lot of perk cards in the game to choose from. So the potential for builds, even though you can change your build on the fly by um, laying out your character with different cards, the potential is higher because there's more combinations of perks to put together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and it is still determined by your stats. If you have four strength, you can only have four strength cards um, active at a certain time. And you can't just keep leveling up your special stats. Your special stats can be leveled up one per level, starting at one uh, up to level 50. Then you can level past level 50 to get more perk cards, but you can't actually increase your specials from there. It is nice in a way because it's like bringing back to Fallout New Vegas how there were actually heaps of perks to choose from, like a lot more than Fallout 4 or I guess even Fallout 3. But, um, and there's going to be lots of opportunity to like make sort of niche kind of characters because some of the perk cards, like the cannibalish sort of related Do you know what it's and... almost like? It's like a loadout. Like here's yeah. a loadout for this. You could play five different builds with one character, but like that's five different loadouts and you've got to have the right stats yeah if you don't have 10 perception and we use 10 perception cards in a certain loadout then you know you've got to make a new character um yeah because i was just thinking like in terms of the role-playing part of it it's like without npcs and quests of, of like where you can sort of have like uh, i guess choice in it and like oh i'm going to choose to betray this person or whatever or interact with them a certain way yeah it's really hard to like sort of role play anyway like it it's is, all it gonna and, be and, and, and let me let me give you my impression on that with pvp you know how I, before i'd uh, had hands-on experience i talked about you could role play being a murderer and you're this evil character or a raider or whatever you can right you can but two things one when you play like the feeling is it's fun like i had heaps of fun right but as far as role playing is concerned, I was role playing like a good, a morally good character in my head. That's how I started out. I, I was this like doctor kind of stealthy dude, right? Um, but the second you get the chance to blow someone's head off and it's your friend, you're just like, Lamau. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to blow your head off. So you kind of, I mean, you could, this is what I'm saying. You could choose, but don't expect to be playing a game where everyone's running around a server role playing. So like, I think a lot of, most people will not be role playing a certain character. They'll just be doing what they feel like. Yeah. Like, I feel like I won't even be, because it's just when you, when you enter it, unless the game facilitates it enough for you to sort of be like, yeah, it can, you know, I can be a bad guy or a good guy or a sort of great well, guy or choices. whatever. there are choices. We've yeah. heard there are choices, but I feel like it'll be very much like open the terminal and it's like, do you want to like... I just feel like it's going to be like... town or not, or do you want to like... Like I can't role play while playing Halo, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's the kind of vibe. So it's sort of, I'm just... Yeah. I'm Then I'm just going to play it how it's sort of meant to be played, which is like a fun co-op Fallout experience kind of thing. Yeah, it kind of feels like Borderlands a bit. Yeah. When you're playing it, like, especially with all the loot and stuff. And like, the good thing is though, the containers in the game are instant to the player. Yeah. So like, if there's a box of loot and I run and take it all, you can go to that box and, and even though I took all the loot, you can then go take all the loot. It's still in there for you. Yeah. Um, which, which I like, but yeah, I'm not like, I want to give it honest. Like statistically, I actually think there's a lot of potential to Fallout 76. Yeah. But as far as role playing goes for your character, you can do it. And, and trust me, with Fudge Muppet's potential, we can figure it out. However, 
it will be a much lesser degree of the game. A lot of the build aspect, which I still like, will be the loadout. The loadout of perk cards, yeah. how, what special stats to pick, and when, and when as well. Yeah. You know, so you, you don't want to pick unevenly, or you'll, you know, you're making a strength character, you got no endurance, and you become a glass cannon by accident early on, even though you want to be kind of sturdy. Because now thinking about it too, because from what it seems like when you're playing, like the way you get perk cards is rather random in some It aspects. is, so I can't tell you what perk cards to get at what level. Either. Yeah, because you just won't have them. Like a lot of it's going to be like, Try and get them. S sort of but you how you should them. build your specials over time, but then also sort of perk card loadouts and what you should, I guess, prioritize. Because there's, there's sections. I think there are common ones, though. For example, yeah. like I was using VATS and I just happened to get like concentrated fire perk cards. Like, like I, I feel like there, there are some base ones they'll throw out. Like if you're starting out and you're using melee, like I'm sure you'll get perk cards for melee damage. I, I, may, I may be wrong. It, it may just be what happened to happen to the people I know who are playing the game. Yeah. But um, yeah, it is random, but I do like that there are all these perk cards to acquire. And there's animated perk cards too, which are nice little collectibles. But yeah, it definitely didn't feel like a... A heavy role playing game. Yeah. As as we expected, man. This is gonna yeah. be different to any other Fallout game. I prefer, honestly, the Fallout 4, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3 style single player game. Yeah. However, absolutely. I had a shitload of fun yeah. playing Fallout 76. This will be cool, like, I think uh, as a spectacle too. Like, I didn't really see too much in your footage because, like you said, you were in one area, but in the E3 trailers and stuff like we've seen lots of different like physical locations and the map's mm. really really big it is. so it's cool it would be cool to just go with friends just see this cool you know what there was like this red corally mutated plant yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. And now, now, now speaking of that like environments and landscapes right so like the feeling was very empty as far as civilization goes because there isn't <laughs> there isn't civilization yeah. but I will commend them on the amount of detail they put into the environment. Um, as I was talking to devs in interviews and stuff like that, they were even explaining, like one of them had run from like one direction from the start of the game just to like see what felt empty. And then they add all this stuff, just if you happen to take that path, then they turn like three degrees to the left. Like he's done this run out of the vault a thousand, like over a hundred times. Yeah. That's what he said, over a hundred times just to see what feels boring. And they would just run different parts of the game over and over again, and then come back and go, mm, this place felt a little empty. Let's fill that out with, with world building and locations and, 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 and content, right? Yeah. Um, so that's good. That seems like there's plenty to do, but my concern, I do have this concern, is that maybe it will feel kind of drab eventually. We yeah. only had three hours, right? Yeah. How, how do I know? Because like, it, it's talking about unique weapons, right? Um, like I climb the top of this watchtower, like, oh, come on, maybe there's a unique sniper, but you get there and there's just loot. And I don't know if you'll get to that point where you know, like, oh, there's this location over here, but there's definitely not a unique weapon in it. So my incentive to explore that has gone down. However, there is tons of lore everywhere, yeah. tons of notes that then randomly give you quests to go and explore more notes and hollow tapes and lore. So that to me, I think is the incentive to explore besides the fact yeah. that it's just fun to explore is like picking up the pieces of the puzzle. If you like that, then I think you'll really like Fallout 76 because I was told there is more of that, obviously, because there aren't actual NPCs in this game than, than the other Fallout games. More, yeah. more world building piece together, the environmental storytelling kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame with the unique weapons because it's like, like one of our complaints with Fallout 4 is that like legendary weapons and stuff sort of like there are made unique weapons. less or that. Yeah, yeah, but like, I mean, how in... It's it, the way you're going to find them is like just from like drops and stuff. And it's sort of, it doesn't have the same feeling as like, you know, in Elder Scrolls when you go and complete some quest and all this, and then you finally get some big data card effect. And well, cool there, there are set bosses. Yeah. And like, I, I, this is the thing. They're very smart because we, we talk to a lot of devs and none of it's on record. So like I can say whatever and, and I can't prove it. And they, we're not allowed to prove it. And like, for example, I remember speaking to someone who was working on the game and they happened to mention something about there being a chance for certain bosses to drop certain powerful items. So you have to maybe, you know, nuke an area, this boss comes out, you fight them multiple times, just as an example off my head. And there's like a 10, like Borderlands, like a 10% chance that they drop this certain thing. Yeah. 
And I said um, to devs, I'm like, are there like really unique weapons? And they were like, oh, hell yeah, there are some really unique weapons. But I feel like they mean, like they don't get our concept of like true uniques. Like my impression was they just mean there are some crazy, powerful, high level, cool weapons yeah that are very unique like for example like because you can see the inventory of who you're trading with and i was trading with some like level 60 devs and stuff just to like snoop through their inventory i saw like pumpkin grenades <laughs> like i yeah. saw some like unique shit um but i don't know if it's like a true unique with a set piece location per se i don't know um i also got the feeling that it's very much about resource management yeah. So that's my impression of the game. If you know how to uh, control resources and you actually do a lot of the crafting and scrapping constantly and 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 uh, building settlements and things like that to get resources, then you'll have a massive advantage just as far as surviving goes and PvP as well. Yeah, I feel like to enjoy this game, you're going to, besides like just being you know, fun to play around and shoot your friends and stuff like that, you've really got to go into it without the like fallout frame if you know what i mean like you're not going treat into, it like its own game you're not going to play an rpg you're going to play a re resource management sort of shooter with your friends and it's about like questing and killing big enemies but it's not about you know with lore and world building yeah yeah not lore common and for those kind of games like yeah. that's that's the elements of fallout that are still there that are really unique to this online experience yeah. and same as the stat side of things like all the perk cards make it really cool yeah but it doesn't have the the role playing kind of thing. It does have the story and they told me the story was the same length as Fallout 4's, but then they more or less said there'd be more side quests and, and due to the extensive world building and things to yeah. discover and also uh, like events and radiant uh, quests and, and uh, like, you know, they'll be adding in things like daily missions, weekly quests, like monthlies. Yeah, well, that, challenges. That, that's a thing because I, I have a feeling like this game will be you, you'll smash the main quest, you'll explore heaps, you'll use play it for like two months, and then it will sort of feel a little bit worn out and you sort of are over it. But I feel like the way Bethesda is going to be able to counter that is by, you know, updating it constantly, Dude, it, bringing it out new content. It is a very completionist game. Yeah. There are tons of recipes to find for crafting and cooking yeah. and, and all of that as well and for settlement building. And then when you complete these challenges that you can open up a menu and see in the, uh, like the, you get atoms. Yeah. And with them, you can go to the atom, the atomic shop and buy things, which is, you know, purely cosmetic. Cause this is the microtransaction side. Yeah. We were told, um, that it would be purely cosmetic. They don't want to make it pay to win. Um, although I will say the exact quote I got was like, at launch, <laughs> they said, if we don't want to make it pay to win, it's just going to be cosmetics at launch, blah, 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 blah. But like I heard at launch and I went, hmm, but, but they did say they don't want to make it pay to win, but I, I will just put that out there. I, I, yeah, I heard that like two words way, and I was like, hmm. Well, yeah. Cause I imagine like they, like ESO has like, you can, you, whatever you subscribe or whatever, and you get like XP faster than than others and so on. But like in the way you guys teamed up, I know you said he wasn't trying as a developer or something and you killed him. Or so whatever. a team of a team of low level people can take down a high level person. It's not stupid. It's not yeah. like it's not like if you try and fight a level 60, you'll do like one damage. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you have a gun that does 20 damage and they have higher health and, and they're powerful and they have power armor and shit, they'll probably kill you. Like very like your chance of winning is maybe like seven percent <laughs> like you're still screwed but if it's one-on-one -on -one, you're still screwed and by the way pvp is consensual like if yeah. you agree to fight a level 60 and you're a level six what did you expect yeah um but it's not like stupid like we killed a level 60 like we teamed up and we we're all like level fives it's yeah. it's just that it's just that yeah you'll probably lose um but pvp itself was like very fun I f and like murder is very hard as well. Murder is when you kill someone who doesn't want to fight you. Like you are yeah. incredibly nerfed to try and kill someone who's not fighting back. Like your damage is severely reduced. Yeah. So it's not like a level 60 can come and kill a level five just for well, fun. See, they, they can, but it's it's pretty hard. I mean, like that's their job. They got to balance like the fun for everyone kind of thing. But it's sort of like... It's like you can't really, you know, role playing as some um, as a raider, raider or it's something. It's actually hard. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's de-incentivized because you get nothing except just the satisfaction for 
But you away. will find that that satisfaction it's, is actually yeah, a big I'm sure pull. it is. It's if a you big, go around and you're like, pull. and that's what they said. They found that, and and I found that like as part of my first impressions, I'll say like the temptation to just kill someone is funny. Like yeah. you're like, oh, I killed you, but but at the same time getting wanted is really shit because you get a bounty on your head and you have to pay that out in out of your own pocket and everyone on the map can see you and you know how you can see everyone else on the map yeah you can't when you're wanted yeah you can't and if you don't have the caps to pay your bounty you get a debuff where for three hours and these are in-game hours right you can't like log off you actually have to play for like three hours like your damage is like severely nerfed and like your shit <laughs> yeah um i feel like that's gonna be your first few months of like them like rebalancing yeah that's the things. thing all of this all of this stuff i'm saying now is subject to change um mutations as well and uh, were really cool like i got the marsupial mutation like we're making a video on that where i could jump really high i really like that aspect of the yeah game. by the way i'll just throw it out here now i was told you will not be able to become a ghoul like aesthetically yeah um still and See, like the survival elements were also, were like, also like, interesting. But that, that's what I like. I miss the the. It, it sounds a bit uh, sucky to me sometimes. I'm just like, I wish this was a Fallout New Orleans with mutations and all this yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, no, like, me too. There's me so too. much cool. Like, we, and with perk cards, even like all the perk cards and mutations has such cool like role playing ability. Like being some like marsupial melee character who's like mm. jumping high. Well, you can, and, you can, you it can. It just doesn't but feel just, the same. Yeah, it doesn't. Like I yeah. can be honest and say it doesn't feel the same, but like. I'm gonna play the shit out of this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's so it's it's. I'm gonna it's a give it a fair game. chance, you know. Yeah, it's just its own. It's just its own thing, and it's very much like you got to get grind. Like you got to get deep into the stat side. Yeah. You got to get deep into the stat side of things. Overall, the impression I got of the game was that it's really fun, and that the lore is really deep. Um, that you shouldn't take everyone's opinion super seriously on how this game will turn out because the three hours went so fast and we had like developers there talking to us the whole time over the top of like in-game or like audio and lore and stuff like that. But it seems like a good game for environmental storytelling, like very good. Like I just found notes everywhere. Um, it found it's a good game for completionist kind of stuff and crafting and recipes and unlocking heaps of little pieces. Um, the gear is good, but don't count on set piece uniques, but do count on really unique, crazy, high level rare gear. It's just that it won't necessarily be like in this certain location. Um, the mutation side of things are really fun. The perk cards are actually pretty good. The special stats work well. Vats works well. Like we'll have a video on Vats. Um, but it isn't the same as we expected. Do not expect a traditional fallout experience with role playing. Don't expect to feel like everyone's taking the game very seriously around you. Like you'll find someone who's like, I'm a traitor. And someone's like, I'm a doctor. And like, I'm this, like a lot of it will be like, I'm wearing a party hat with a shotgun and I'm going to shoot your head off for fun. Yeah. But like running into people's not ridiculously common in a normal experience. That's what I was told. Because yeah. we were all jam-packed into like one quarter of the map. And it does feel big and the environments are cool. I'm keen to give it a shot. Yeah, so like that's the first impressions, everyone. Big video, but honest video. And that, that's what I wanted. I want an honest video. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Subscribe. If you're still watching, congratulations. Like, good work. I really appreciate it. Sub for more. we got heaps more coming. Social media links are in the description. I'm Michael. I'm here with Scott. Hello. And uh, yeah, we'll nerd out with you again very soon.